Yeah, Cloud9 have a lot to prove. At the same time, there are like zero expectations for Cloud9 right here. They can go in and just play fairly freely and show what they can do. Well, three bands already in, gents. Mordecai is out. Azia once again banned by AHQ. Rek'Sai and Rise from Cloud9. So C9 targeting some very specific champions with at least another jungle ban hitting maybe the weaker area of uh, Cloud9's team. Yet another Azir ban. That is no surprise for AHQ. Even with the nerf to Azir, it is somewhat expected. And there are more unknowns on the side of AHQ than any other team at Worlds for pick and ban because the last time, the last competitive patch they played on was 5.13. They ended their season so long ago and qualified as the number one seed. It will definitely be revealing what they decide to do in so this champ select. Both Gangplank and Lulu will be open. And instantly, as I say, Cloud9 Boom. locks in the one that was left. That is the three picks we keep highlighting. Mordecai, a Gangplank, and Lulu. Obviously, HQ will still have a chance not to get an Elise, sadly, for Mountain, but he's played a lot of Gragas back in the LMS. He likes these big Bruiser here where he can stay alive a little bit and wait for his team then to move from the lanes and join him in these invades. He likes to do like Mountain is a jungler. He only goes one way, and that's forward. I've never seen the guy retreat from a fight. He's always first man in, and he stays in there, and he keeps fighting. Traditionally, standing at the end of it as well, AHQ have been incredibly dominant in their region, only dropping three games all summer long. You contrast that to Cloud9, it was only three series they managed to win all summer long. Maybe yeah. it's an overstatement. And in those three series, they dropped more games than AHQ did in their entire split. It really feels like a David and Goliath matchup, but well, let me see what AHQ do. Callista and Bram, three seconds left. It looks like those will be the picks. Yeah. Like these two very strong picks for AHQ, don't get one of the real Big power picks, but Brom, I think for support, it is definitely up there as, as a must pick in almost every single game. And of course, Kalista, while she's not perm ban anymore, she's still a very, very strong laner. And AHQ as a team will constantly force fights around that bottom lane. Ziff will TP down, Mountain will gang it, and Westall will roam. So having a strong lane, at least where you have early kill pressure, is very important for their early fights because they have to snowball. So Cloud9 need to think about what they're going to lock in. The Brahmas also a steal. Ooh. Early lock in, and it is a Morgana, most likely for <laughs> Lemon. Couple of interesting things about these Cloud9 picks. The Morgana is what Lemon Nation ended up picking after he shied away from Karma, which he seemed really attached to. It's also an old school counter pick to Braum. I never considered it a counter pick, but it's actually very good against it because you can black shield the stun from the Braum. Additionally, Lee Sin is a champion high, has put a lot of games on. It's a champion we expect to see a ton of jungle prevalence throughout Worlds here. Five attack damage on Warrior, as well as some energy buffs and buffs to the ultimate, which allow to do more damage on targets it passes through, are all big things, and Cloud9 will look to put out some early pressure here. Yeah, much like we saw Fnatic in the last game try and counter what IG normally likes to do with camping that top side of the map. Cloud9 now knows how HQ plays the early game, and they want Early aggression with at least a jungle, but Gangplank can also fight for himself. But Darius was still left open. Ooh, and it's it's That's a very strong pick. And in. And Darius Rengar. and Rango at the 2015 World Championships. So two of the big champions, we ex two of the three big champions we pointed out as being extremely powerful on this patch have been picked here, Darius and Gangplank. Lulu was, of course, banned. And then out of nowhere, we get this Rengar from Mountain. We're looking at the champions he's played since the summer split. He actually wasn't their jungler until the very end of the spring split. And there are no Rengar games anywhere here. This is awesome. Yeah. We've got so many questions, not only on the side of AHQ. Balls no pl not played uh, uh, Gangplank. We've got one game for High and Lee Sin, and it was a loss. I cannot wait to see how they play in game. 20 seconds left for two more Remember, picks. Remember, Gangplank is a flex pick. It can go to the mid lane. I might even say it's probably better in the mid lane. You have a free and fire play. <laughs> but Vega as well, I love this pick. This is like Christmas. So, much. so now we know the mid lane. We're assuming that's Incarnation's Vega. That's going to be his this Vega. Chan this pick and ban is Christmas. Deficio, I'll give it to you. You have many things to say about Vega. So Vega is coming in now as a champion that has been buffed in quite a few patches to slowly under the surface, been getting buffs in there. The last one he got was very big for him. And in this mid lane, as a pick, 
He's not the greatest early laner. He's not going to destroy your pre-level six. Which could be worrying against Westor. Sure. He's yet to pick. He gets to pick a counter assassin. He has to go find against assassin against it. He has to. But Fizz? if you do not shut down the Vega, of course, Fizz. It wasn't bad. It's been bad in almost every game against AHQ. If you don't shut down the Vega before he hits level eleven, he will take over the game and he will one shot everyone. And then Westor is going to stand on this face here, being like. I want to one-shot one guy, and Incarnation takes out three at the same time. So we're going to have to see HQ use Rengar level six combined with Fizz level six and destroy Incarnation so he Jeez. doesn't sit and stack up AP, get his cooldown reduction, and just one-shot targets in the late game. This is going to be such an explosive game. And you know what, Chad? You said to me, imagine if you have Vagar and Gangplank on the same <laughs> team. The zone the control, zone control <laughs> is barrels, huge. And his stun coming down, that burst damage is ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, on the bus right here, we were talking about champions we thought we'd see, and all of the champions we got excited about are already starting to trickle through. Every champion pick in the first two games has been unique. There have been no duplicate champions from this game to the next, as far as picks. I really like this patch. Now the question so is... So far. This is still no, I just like it. This is still very snowbally as I'm led to believe. If Darius gets ahead, if Rango gets ahead, if Vigo gets ahead, etc. It's the meta. It's, it's also the team out of control. Like AHQ needs to fly ahead of the opponent to win, and they do it very often. And they've got the tools to do it again. Here's your team compositions, ladies and gentlemen. They need level six this time around for let's, HQ, and then they can go crazy. Let's find out because we are exceptionally excited. Jump on Twitter once again, hashtag C9win. Do they have more magic in their tank? Or will AHQ, the favorites coming into this game, pick up their first victory here in the group stages? It is Cloud9 taking on AHQ with Vagar in the mid lane. The tiny monster of evil. And we also get Westdoor's Fizz in this game. Yes, Westdoor wasn't high in the MVP voting over in the LMS, but it's Westdoor's Fizz. He doesn't get to play this champion. And now he's playing it against Vega. And you know what? It's Anne's Callista. So AHQ, when they have these early fights in the bottom lane, they're looking to give Anne the kills, and of course, Westdoor, whatever he can pick up. But like him, you might just be one shot by incarnation. Westor's Fizz is 4 and 0 oh in their last 31 games played with a 15 KDA. Yeah, and it's been banned 26 times. Well, <laughs> picked away one other. Anytime there's a game with Westor, Fizz shows up and picks her banned. Now, for Cloud9, we mentioned a little bit how the Lee Sin pick, they want to try and counter some of the early aggression. But for me, the Gangplank and Vega, that is where Cloud9 wants a bit more time before their composition really kicks in. So for them, you got to play safe in the early game. you got to be able to predict where HQ is going. Because once you hit 11 and get ranked to ulti and rank three of your E on this Vega here with the stun, grouping is going to be so powerful for them. And I don't think HQ will be able to respond against that. Well, we'll find out if they get a chance to respond to Fisher. We're almost at two minutes. Lane swap seems to be initiated by Cloud9. And coming into this, we talked about how maybe a lane swap could have helped Cloud9 overcome some of the tower diving and team fighting strengths in the early game from AHQ. But some of the champions will struggle a little bit. I know there was a discussion regarding Lee Sin and his effectiveness or preference in lane swaps. Really late invade there by Cloud9, but it seems to have actually pushed AHQ down just a little bit. Uh, they won't be starting Krugs, and in fact, Cloud9 is going to get to start the Krugs. Uh, I actually feel like that's an incredibly small win for Cloud9, being able to start on the opposing jungle. So what both teams could look to do, if you value getting that early experience for your AD carry and support, is you fast push the first two waves and then you bounce it on the tower and you freeze it from there and you try and just get a high level AD carry who can 1v1 the enemy top laner. For now though, both teams obviously instantly and you see Albus on the bottom side of the map warding up the jungle of Cloud9 because now they gotta make sure that High and Bolts can move down and start farming on the side. But we see Cloud9 already well, sending members. You have to respect this roam right away. Whenever there's an AD carry, the support goes rogue uh, and Albus now looking to do a bit of an invade into the bottom jungle. Slightly vertical jungle, but actually if High doesn't make it over quickly, he's going to be counter juggling pretty hard. So because Cloud9 up in the top side of the map saw where Rengar and Darius were starting, they knew they were really far away from the bottom side, and that's why they can send balls in here. But High, as you said, he needs to be down there as well. Otherwise, HQ can just focus so, and dive. I don't think Cloud9 actually saw the jungle start. They walked through a ward, but then Darius and Rengar dodged below. 
We'll see where the Cloud9 will be able to respond. Ziv is going to teleport up top, and uh, every time we... Kai is lost here. He went in, they did not know he started red, so that's okay. why he yeah. late no, the red, right. and now he's right. going down to his own jungle. But because he made the quick reaction, Mountain is also not able to counter jungle red. So. One thing I do want to keep an eye on, every time we look middle, by the way, Inca Incarnation farming with that Baleful Strike, he's already got plus 10 AP for free. And I want to track just how high that goes. You want to know the funny thing about Vega is you don't even need that bonus AP. Just from standard items, you get so much damage because you have a 1 to 0 scaling on your ulti and on your W. So late game, you're just such a monster. It's more about even the stun duration and the cooldown of your stun blocking such a massive zone and making it very difficult for Kalista to jump around in a fight. With all the early game action, Balls is the one that's suffering. Seven CS in contrast to Ziv's 14. Lemonation did back earlier after doing those crags to help babysit Balls in this lane. And we've got an interesting 2v2. It's a very different lane swap compared to what we saw in the last game where Fnatic were fast pushing from the start and AHQ tried to freeze one wave and then send down people to defend. Backfired completely because they were so late. Here we see both teams kind of being happy, just trading experience on top and the AD carry. We see up in the top with Darius being in the one-on-one -on -one lane. Yeah. High instead looking for a player on the mid lane. We're not expecting Mountain to do anything pre-6. And Westos going in. He's gone in aggressively, and that might be brave. Event Horizon is flashed as Westor gets past the Christmas bells. Oh, Dark Binding connects on Anne, but there's no follow-up. Exactly, and also they can just put up the Braum Shield any time a Binding lands, so the balls can't shoot through. These are actually really favorable lane matchups for AHQ early in this lane swap. Ziv on Darius should be able to farm up just fine with Doran Shields and four health potions. Additionally, Anne and Albus can really punish Sneaky and Lemonation, or sorry, Balls and Lemonation in that bottom lane uh, because of the Braum and because of the melee versus range discrepancy. Yeah, never been a fan of the lane swaps where you just trade AD carry for top lane experience. I think top lane has always benefited so much more from getting an advantage. Now in this case, you can see Cloud9 is swapping back. So before it gets completely out of hand, they want to get it back to standard lanes. I like the little play though from high around the mid lane, because you saw the minion wave were pushing slowly down to Incarnation. That meant Westar, he had to overextend to keep farming as a melee champion. And therefore, High knew there was a chance to get in, and he forces a flash, which can be key now that Westar will be under more pressure, and Incarnation is soon hitting level six. Yeah, of course. Incarnation is going to have that freedom, thanks to his opponent not having flash. I want to mention balls going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Ziv's Darius. We've touched a lot on the Gangplank and the Vagar, but Darius a champion we've not seen in the West at all. He simply became relevant after the patches, right. after the tournaments had already ended. What are we yeah. expecting out of Darius? He is tremendously strong in melee versus melee matchups. Uh, and he's also very swingy in lane. The fact that Balls has had to swap back into this lane with Ziv having a full level on him as well as double CS, is putting him in a situation to fail. So Ziv will actually have a large amount of lane pressure and should be able to bully Balls' gangplank quite substantially here. It was just such a weird start for C9 with taking that camp and then slow pushing it with Sneaky up on the top side. So he barely got an XP advantage over that top laner on their way. So Ziv just picked up so much extra farm and he's gonna continue to be a bully. Level six is where he really starts becoming extremely hard to deal with. And he's one of these champions that if he gets going, he can just snowball completely out of control. It's why teams like playing around the top lane. And we had a question regarding Ziv and his champion pool coming into this tournament. He used to be mainly the tank player, being the main engage. He's on Darius, he's on a carry, and so yeah. far it's looking good for him. Well, I, in my opinion, Darius as a top laner has the most overlap oh, wow. between tank and carry. Maokai or Nar or Shen, the things that Ziv played a lot of in the regular season are full tanks, but Darius generally builds tank items, and then if he gets Noxian Might up, will gain upwards of 200 attack damage in the late game and become the carry. So the textbook juggernaut, I would say, yeah. for Darius. The standard build we see from me is Black Cleaver and then often Dead Man's Plate coming in as well. And I think that's an extremely powerful item on this patch here, giving him a bit of movement speed. And also if he stacks it up to 100, of course, that first hit where he gets the extra damage and a slow is really good for a fairly low mobility champion like Darius. Westar, taking a little bit of poke. He doesn't have flash, remember? We'll be able to just dance out of this one. Clearing that pink ward is actually pretty high value considering he didn't have immediate jungle support. So that's actually a nice mini win there for Westar and his flash is only two minutes off from coming and you, back again. You talk about jungle support, Level there we go. Game. Thrill of the hunt, the stun connects. This will be first blood to Westar's fizz. He does get stunned up high. I'm not sure you want this fight. 
gets some damage down. And the Assassin has got his hands on the gold. Something we hadn't talked about much this game is the importance of the level 6 Rengar gank and also the importance of Elise Sin having impact before Rengar can hit that point. Not only did Mountain nail his first Rengar gank, 10 out of 10 getting the kill and the flash from Incarnation, High hasn't even hit 6 yet, nor has he pulled off a gank that burned any summoner spell. Surprising that the first gank C9 pulls off was very smart, timing the minion wave, pushing in, forcing a flash. There was no return from High. A no flash mid laner managed to take away a pink ward. That should never happen, especially because your jungler has not been paying attention to the side lanes either. So we need to see high go in and still use the fact that Wistar had no summoner or for a few more seconds, one minute maybe. He can still be punished. So far, HQ has been getting everything in this game. Slowly pulling ahead, over a thousand gold. Every time we look top, Ziv is shoving balls under his tower. We see Sneaky and Lemon being forced down. They're taking unfavorable trades from Albus and Anne. And, you know, Mountain, he didn't, he wasn't needed. He was able to just power farm his way up to Thrill of the Hunt. And the problem now for C9 is the fact that if you do not have lanes pushing against the Rengar, it is very difficult to get into the jungle and start warding deep where you can spot him using his ulti. You can't even deep ward in the lanes either to see if he's coming from there. So suddenly Mountain, every time ulti is ready, should have the opportunity to surprise Cloud9. No flash yep. incarnation this time around. Westar has ulti. You can just return to the mid lane and do exactly the same thing again. Yeah, I should also note the early gank from High did burn the flash, but that's pretty much all he did. Exactly, but we need the, the follow up then. Yeah, and he, he's missed that follow up. Westor again has flash, and his mid laner is the one sitting without. It's really a lot about Incarnation trying to passively farm here to get his ability power up, and Balls' gangplank passively farming to get extra gold from his barrels, because outside of that, Cloud9 doesn't have many windows for success here in the early game. An incarnation, of course, running cooldown reduction per level runes for himself. Get the 3.75% for masteries as well. And then he's a Thiend and he can start making some plays with Mountain. We just mentioned it. He's back towards the mid lane. Incarnation is standing very far back, though. Yep. Not going to be at risk of getting caught this time. As we've crested 10 minutes, AHQ have that 1,000 gold lead. And a touch on that early well, game graph, they accelerate as they get closer to 20. Incarnation may uh, he be in trouble. He's going to get far enough away. And small misplay from Mountain. And I think, actually, Incarnation played that really well. It was greedy of Mountain to pop through all the hunts so early, but Incarnation was constantly dashing in and out of where turret range would be if Rengar jumped on him. And Mountain was not willing to engage himself in a full-on turret dive, so nice job there. And a very important thing to highlight with Vega's stun in this matchup. Let's just see the bot lane first, though. Elimination doesn't look to go aggressive, but you can not dash through the stun of Vagar. So when he gets the warning that Mountain is coming, he can just pop down the stun near himself, and Rengar will always get stunned on the way in and should not be able to one-shot him or at least lock him down. So Incarnation, as long as he stays far enough back and gets the warning and not hawk a or whatever, so someone can jump in and, and kill him, he should be okay. Plus 58 ability power on Dark Matter, almost three amp tones already. And outside of a big CS discrepancy in the top lane, it's not looking great for Cloud9. AHQ continue to just play for the long game. Yeah, the one saving grace here for Cloud9 is this bottom lane. Tristana is a pick that mainly caught on in North America. And this is specifically what they do for it. They continually push up, they get the explosive charge on the turrets, and they shove them down as quickly as possible. Even though Sneaky was top lane for the early start of that lane, he still gets the turret. And even though the rest of the game was going towards AHQ, that turret gold is going to come in really handy if they can withstand the rest of these ganks. Well, going Mountain balls, though. wants to get balls. Apprehend connects, as does the Decimate. That's a flash away. The teleport from Incarnation gets cancelled by Chum the Waters. We still get to it. While all that is going on, Lemon, Sneaky, and High take Dragon number one after taking tower number one. Yeah, Mountain wasted that ulti in the mid lane before, so didn't have it ready for the dive up top, and then C9 using all the globals they had ready. High just uh, 
making Wisto use a bit of mana, and now he cannot clear the yeah. wave because they're already pushing on it. And Cloud9 is rotating around Sneaky to get the explosive charge on turrets as quickly as possible and trying to punish the low wave clear of the Fizz mid. Cloud9 is still very much in this game, getting the dragon, avoiding the dive in the top lane, and also getting that bottom turret. It is putting the emphasis on AHQ to start fights, which shouldn't be a problem, but they haven't found the fights yet. One of the main things for Tristana when she became a pick was that she was good in lane against Kalista. You could out-trade the Kalista with the early trades because you had your E doing the physical damage. And then, once you get towards these towers here, because Kalista is a fairly slow wave clear and basically very limited before Hurricane with the wave clear, Tristana will always get the four or five hits with the bomb exploding. So C9, when you have a Vagar, when you have a Tristana and a Black Shield, that's a very, very strong siege composition for them against absolutely no defensive wave clear on the side of AHQ. So AHQ are looking to open up the map soon and start fighting him. They do not want a longer laning phase. They need to start getting these rooms and creating these picks. Otherwise, Cloud9 can just easily group. Incarnation is getting very close to his 11, and then suddenly it becomes very bad for AHQ. Well, AHQ do look to secure their first tower in a moment or two. Their next wave is busy conga lining down balls. Still 35 CS down, but while he's unable to defend top, AHQ are under pressure middle. It looks like Lemon will be aiding Incarnation yeah. and High's just waiting in the wings. So what Sneaky wants to do here is push up the bottom lane to apply pressure and force someone to defend, and then he can just rotate to the mid lane, group up with Incarnation, and take down this mid tower. You can see him already move away and start moving through the jungle, or at least trying to, then they spot Rengar on a lot of these deep wards, and now he can safely just jump away. Very, very good wards from C9. They know which lanes to play around, bottom side and mid lane, because those are the outer turrets you're aiming for. Let Balls just try and farm whatever he can up top. So Mountain's first ultimate was fantastic. The following two, optimistic. Yeah. They have not paid off. Just a quick difference in their item builds as well. Moby Boots, both warrior enchantments. Uh, Moby Boots for Mountain versus the Sightstone for High. So still fairly squishy on both sides of the jungle camp. And this would normally be the time in the game where AHQ would be taking advantage, but they just strictly don't have the wave clear, and that's the stun! Oh, he's down! Sneaky gets the kill, even an assist for Balls. They're gonna turn their attention to the tower as that cannon barrage helps to clear the wave. C9 might be behind in gold, but this composition when it gets to Siege on a tower is so deadly. You see the stun, the chain CC coming, and you just burst down one target. They are so far ahead in map pressure as well. Oh. West have to fight, and they just keep chaining. Cloud9 is on a rampage. Oh, there we go. Wait for Event Horizon to come back up, and Inc Incarnation will say, I'll have another. They have decided to back away for now. Look at Westall. He was in the river. And because Ziv was called down, Balls gets free time in the top side. The pressure and the tempo is so heavily in Cloud9's favor, it is catching AHQ way off guard. AHQ and the LMS is used to playing a laning phase where they always get slightly ahead. They're then used to getting out of the laning phase and just take team fights left and right, and they win them and they get so far ahead of the other team. Now, they're suddenly against a group of guys who can simply move up to a tower as a unit and just slowly but surely they look for a pick or they just take down the tower and AHQ needs to respond by flanking them and getting a massive team fight. And this game could very easily become a bloodbath with the way it's progressing. Both teams have multiple turrets down and LMS, much more than North American or European LCS, fight over the dragon, specifically if the other team is trying to chain them. It was actually really strange that Cloud9 was able to get that first dragon, which means AHQ is putting even more priority on preventing the second one. And since Cloud9 does have turrets down already, the next course of action would be to start securing those dragons. This fight in 90 seconds could be massive. Level 11 for Incarnation. He's got 120 bonus ability power thanks to that passive on Baleful Strike. And we did see AHQ grouping around the dragon. So for Cloud9, where is their next move? Mountain does have Thrill of the Hunt on, and yeah. he's thrown it down. Really poor ultimates after that first gank so far. I mean, what was he hoping to accomplish with that? He ulted, and he wasn't willing to face check in to get vision because honestly, he may have died. I think he was, yeah, also just checking. Is there anyone hiding around here? Do I get a marker? Do I get a warning? But it does mean for the team fight now near this dragon, it is not there. And the way for HQ again to engage just highlighted they have to be able to flank in. 
Otherwise, incarnation could just land the stun, Ooh. deal the damage. Oh, that was so, so close. If Westar jumped in, that Primordial Burst could have just insta gipped him. I will say, from the earlier push that Cloud9 did on the mid lane, it does feel like HQ is not well prepared for this Vagar pick. And Incarnation has put a lot of practice in on it. Jack, who, nice would be, in. who would be prepared for the Vagar pick? It's How Worlds, you have to be prepared for anything. And this is the value of some of these different picks. Whether or not you can find the proper counters for Vagar, this is what's looking like close to the first West Door and AHQ have seen of it. 3,000, sorry, 2,000 gold ahead. Cloud9 are after falling behind at the 10 minute mark. Dragon and Vision way north of Dragon is fully secured. Cloud9 should not be surprised. But look at where Storm Mountain off to the left hand side of your screen. And this is another beautiful thing about this Vagar pick is once you start fighting around objectives, your stun can just cover a complete entrance. How on earth is HQ gonna walk into this dragon if they walk straight into the stun? They might have to. They have teleport on Ziv and they're giving up the second dragon already. Cloud9 with a fantastic performance. Let's be honest, surprising many. A lot of people anticipated AHQ to do well, and this Vigar pick has thrown the game on its head. Incarnation gets caught by another chum, the waters. Flashes defensively high, forced a safe card out. We did see the Glacial Fisher go down, as well as the Cannon Barrage. And at the end of the day, a lot blown for nothing. TP used from Ziv as well, but it quickly cancelled, realized there was no fight to be had as C9 already jumped out. But we mentioned this in Champs, like we talked about it during the early game, how for Cloud9, it was just all about not falling behind in the early stages of the game. Wait for Incarnation and wait for Sneaky to scale up a little bit and then to start sieging away. And as you said yet before, HQ so far have been looking for a few picks with Mountain. But he's been very far from finding anything. Yeah, Mount Mountain's Rengar has not been impressive. His first gank was good. Everything after that has completely missed the mark. The deep wards from Cloud9 are in all the right places to stop Mountain from being able to push. And despite, here's the huge thing, despite balls going into that top lane against Adarius, beginning down 20 CS and a level, he was down 40 to 20 and level 5 to 4. And even though he lost his turret early on, he's stuck right in there and he's been able to use his global somewhat offensively. Huge credit to Balls' gangplank, his most played champion in Korean solo queue during the bootcamp. He is doing good work against Ziv, HQ's strongest player. The key really for C9 with this early game is the fact they had that Tristana into Callista lane on the bottom side. With the Morgana to just continue pushing the lane over and over. So while they were losing on the top side, going even on the in the middle lane with Incarnation dying once to the gank, they were winning the bottom lane. That gave them an opening to get an outer turret and get into the jungle of AHQ and start placing some of these deep boards you see on your map now, making it even harder for Mountain to pull off an ulti. Uh, we do see that wave clear being so useful. Westor, wow, he's decided to go aggressive. Balls has been caught out, Chum the Waters goes up, and Westor makes that look so easy. But Cloud9 says they want to fight in the mid lane. The dunk faster, Darius is about to get dunked. It's Sneaky that gets the kill. Now we've turned into a 4v4. We do see uh, Mountain jumping in, but he immediately has to flash away. Exhaust reducing all his damage. Event Horizon has come back off cooldown. Sneaky's trying to be focused by Westall, but it won't be enough. That's the second kill of the fight for Sneaky. He's burning. He needs to run away. Another Mountain binding. gets caught by a Dark Binding, and High goes in, but it's Incarnation that secures the kill credit. 5 to 2 and 4,000 gold up. And Cloud9 is actually thinking of turning on to Baron after this. This is a risky call. That was a great kill. Chaotic fight win by Cloud9. They got balls coming in with TP. And is the only one in the mid lane. Three others are dead. This is barren at 22 minutes for Cloud9. They will take full control of the game after this secure. So we see two things from HQ as well. We saw Westall split pushing, getting a kill onto balls. That's one of the ways they can get back into the game. But then the rest of the team were caught sleeping in the mid lane. High gets the engage. Look at Elimination landing, binding after binding as well. And the CC between him and Incarnation allows Sneaky to stay alive and just sit back and deal all the damage. And specifically the fact that Ziv was eliminated before that fight made it even, even though AHQ thought with the collapse up from Westdoor they would have the edge. But Westdoor too had burned significant cooldowns to kill balls in the bottom lane. And the binding accuracy versus the skill shot accuracy from Incarnation's Vegar in this fight were just too much for AHQ to handle. And we're just getting later and later into the build the, for Incarnation. The because right. you get five on every kill or assist. 168 bonus AP. Right. Currently, Incarnation 
has 497 ability power at 22 minutes. A Baron as well, and they are now sieging the Inhibitor turret. It is down! This is exactly why Tristan is such a big pick in the North American LCS. The instant you get an edge, you get to snowball. Oh, he spots him! He the... found Mountain! And Mountain's jumped in, but he's down! It's Balls that takes him out! Ziv got stunned by the Event Horizon, and he's forced to flash away. Sneaky goes in aggressively. Red buff is ticking. Buster shot gets eaten by Elvis as Anne eats a huge crit for dinner. The Inhibitor will be dropping, and there are minions pouring the bottom line. They might go for the end. That's 20 second death you got cameras on you got West it, Jordan, no ultimate. Keep pushing, keep pushing. And they are pushing. Nexus turret number one is being focused. Another the stun. Horizon catches West Door, and he may need to take the door. The exit. Cloud9, look for the second Nexus turret. It is being focused down. The satchel charge is on. It's ticking and burning. That drop will drop shortly. The Event Horizon catches Anne, but he is able to QSS away. Second item QSS. There is no damage. Cloud9 are on the Nexus, and they will take down the number one team from the LMS. 23 minutes and 58 seconds. One of the fastest games of the year come against AHQ, the number one team from the LMS, and Cloud9, a team who at one point in the regular season was ninth. What an upset in this group stage. The analyst just before this game here, every single one of them mentioned something that C9 had going for them that could win the game. We had Cloud9 and we had high on his shot calling. We had, yep. of course, Incarnation and Sneaky as the two carries as well. Both of them stepping yep. up big time in this game. But this conversation for C9 when it comes to sieging is so powerful. And HQ had zero wave clear. Such a risky call. And there were so many unknowns about AHQ coming into this event. And DeFisher, you and I were actually talking last night. Cloud9 had a lot of different ways in which they could win this game. We didn't get a chance to talk about it because it was over in 24 minutes. But if Incarnation <laughs> could outperform Westdoor, pressure and shove the mid lane so Westdoor could not roam, if Zib could not have a dominating performance on a new champion, and if Sneaky could win the 2v2 against Anne. That All was of the those big things happen. Really, the Sneaky versus Anne in the bottom lane for me. C9 gave up the first part in the mid lane. It looked like, okay, you're losing top. Are you going to start losing mid lane as well? Where is the pressure going to come from? Bottom lane. Tristana pick from Sneaky. Elimination on the Morgana. Get that early tower. Get the D-board. Start rotating mountain. I'm not sure what he was doing with the ultis. 24 minutes. He wasn't even close. This it, game was over in under 24 minutes. Obviously, Baron buff timing with the Trist makes it easier to shove down turrets, but man, did they close that fast. We got so excited in Pixel.